Am I the asshole for not warning my hookup about the snake room? I have a ball python. She's 4.5 feet long, very lazy and chill, and mostly lays under her heat lamp and her tank. When I bought the house, I let her have the run of the room because I have extra space, and I also sealed everything and keep the lid off so she can roam freely. And I also made a big cat tree for snakes. And I have a few aquariums and terrariums in there with my octopus and lizard. And it's important to note that I have a sign on the door that says no step on snake. With that context, I had a guy over at my house for a hookup and we met at a bar. Judge if you want. For some reason, he went upstairs to use the bathroom but opened the snake door. Am I the asshole for not warning my hookup about the snake room? He yelled from upstairs and slammed the door and said there's a snake in the house. I said that's my snake and she's chill. He came downstairs screaming at me saying that I should have warned him and that I was a crazy B word for having a snake in a room. I asked why he was going through my rooms anyways and he said he assumed that I would meet him in my bedroom. I told him there was literally a sign saying the snake was there but he still called me crazy. Then he walked out and told me I should have told him. Am I wrong for calling the cops on my neighbor after they took a package off my porch? I, 38 female, live alone in the house I grew up in. It was left to me by my mother after she passed away 10 years ago. For the past four years, I've had issues with these specific neighbors. For example, there was an issue where their dog would jump the fence and chase my cats. I told them if I saw it again, I'd call the cops and they asked if I'd be willing to split the cost of a taller privacy fence. I refused, but they did end up putting in the taller fence. Then they asked me to split the cost of taking down an ash tree that was on their property. It was 10% on my property, but I still declined. They'd also thrown some loud parties, which caused me to call the cops. Am I wrong for calling the cops on my neighbor after they took a package off my porch? I'm out of town visiting family for a couple of weeks and have a friend that comes over to my house every day to check on my cats and check for mail. I got a notification the other day that some packages were delivered so I texted my friend to let them know. Before my friend could get there, I got a notification from my ring doorbell. I saw my neighbor on my patio and asked him what he was doing and he said a package of theirs got delivered to my house by mistake. I told him to leave and that my friend would bring over his package. He said he's not waiting and I told him if he takes it, I'm calling the cops. He shoved the package in front of the camera and said that's my name and address. He took it and I called the cops. Am I wrong for not giving a wedding present? I promise because I was uninvited. I, 32 male, was invited to a wedding of an acquaintance of mine named Molly a few months ago. I'm not super close to her or her fiance, but I love weddings, so I said, yeah, I'll go. Now, the relevant part here is that I have a very good career and make an excellent living. Plus, I love giving gifts and splurging a bit. So, I spoke with Molly and her fiance and promised them a custom-made gaming PC since they game together. They were very happy and thanked me a lot. The price of the PC would come out to be a little over $1,500, not counting the monitor I was willing to throw in. This is a gift for an acquaintance? What do you get for like your close family and friends? That's what I want to know. Two months ago, Molly told me that unfortunately, I had to be uninvited to the wedding as part of a cost cutting measure. She apologized, but assured me it was only because of cost. I was upset, but let it go. Then I found out a week or so later that a mutual acquaintance that was still going that Molly told her she had to cut people because she needed the invites for some of the groom's family who decided to come. I was pissed, so I decided to not give Molly the PC I promised. Molly's wedding happened two weeks ago, and from what I can tell, it was a nice ceremony. Afterwards, she actually texted me asking if we could talk about when the PC would arrive. I asked if we could call. She said yes. I told her that since I didn't go to the wedding, that I wasn't going to get her a gift. That's like, that's calm. I mean, yeah, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Why would I? That's so weird. Like, hey, you can't come to my wedding anymore, but please feel free to still give me the $1,500 gift that you were going to get me. We had a long argument where I said I was being petty and that I was holding it against her that I couldn't come and that I made a promise. I didn't tell her that I knew because I wanted to protect the person who told me. She called me a petty asshole and complained to our friend. I explained to a few select people the whole story. Most agreed with me, but some said that weddings cause people to make very tough decisions that aren't personal. Now I'm doubting myself. Maybe it wasn't personal and I'm just being petty. But she did lie to me and uninvited me while still expecting an expensive gift from me. So am I the asshole? Am I wrong for telling my dad's wife that I own the house she lives in?
My 29 female dad married a woman named Maria a year ago after dating for four years. My dad wanted to buy a larger house for them to live in but couldn't afford it without selling the home he lived in at the time, which is a unique property that he dearly loves. Although I now live abroad, I like the area he lives in and my husband offered to buy a house there that my dad and Maria could live in. My dad agreed to this on the provision that we not tell Maria that it wasn't him who paid for the house. This made no difference to me so I agreed and the house they live in is in my name and they live there. I never planned to tell her. Recently, I went back to my home country and decided to stay with my dad for half my time there. The whole time, Maria made it clear I was an inconvenience and that me doing things with my dad was annoying to her, but I'm not a confrontational person and I don't react to much, so I let it go. However, two days before I was due to leave, she came into my room and saw that I had my dad's dog on the bed. Now, this is a dog that my dad has had since before he met Maria and that I raised. Maria doesn't allow him on her bed, which is fine, but I've always had him sleep on mine. She flipped out saying that this was the final straw and that she'd had enough of me disrespecting her in her own home and I had to leave. I tried to de-escalate the situation saying we should just wait for my dad and sit down and talk this out but she was adamant that I had to leave and that she had the authority to make me. After several minutes of me trying to explain to her that it was absurd of her to try and kick me out of my dad's house without talking to him, she said that what she said went and since she married my dad, this is technically her house. I just chuckled and said, since my name is on the deed, it's technically my house, but there's no need to get technical and we should just wait for my dad. She was shocked and left the room. When my dad came back, I told him what happened and he went to speak to her. There was a shouting match and she didn't speak to either of us until I left two days later. My dad is mad I told her, which I get, but since then, I've also got texts from her kids saying that I was the asshole for telling her and making her feel like a guest in the house. This isn't the case. She isn't a guest. She's a tenant, but so is is my dad and the only point I was trying to make was that she didn't have a business trying to kick me out of my father's house let alone my own property. I didn't take it there until she did. That said maybe I should have just left the ownership out and let my dad handle it. For everyone talking about Maria being a tenant and tenants rights she doesn't pay rent so I don't know if that makes her a tenant technically. If it does, then as a landlord, I'm pretty sure I have legal recourse over the remodeling she did without notifying me over my approval. And anyways, I wasn't there as a landlord. I was there as a guest of another tenant and actually she did have several weeks notice I was coming in any case. I'm sure it's a legal rabbit hole, but the only reason I use the word tenant is to say that since she lives there, she isn't a guest in the home. Today, I fucked up by trying to prank my fiance on April Fool's Day. I was wasting time on Reddit and found the perfect one. Easy setup, little cleanup, and dumb. It was perfect. I was home alone that day, so I grabbed some farfalle pasta from the pantry. I wanted a good crunch and got to work. I knew chances of my prank happening anytime soon were slim, as our master bathroom is slightly out of the way and my fiancé typically goes for the guest bath. That's okay, though. I'm a patient person. As soon as she got home from work, our son wanted to go play soccer outside. So we all go out and play for a while before coming back inside and having dinner. After drinking a bunch of water outside, coupled with a glass of wine with dinner, nature called. So naturally, I go into our bedroom, having completely forgotten what I did to the toilet. I jumped. The crunch. The feeling. The noise. The panic. Can confirm, this prank is a good one. I got myself. I chuckled and went out into the living room to tell her what had just happened, but was greeted by an empty room. By some kind of twisted luck, she had gone into a different part of the house while I had seemingly shattered the toilet with my ass, saving me from embarrassment. The temptation to go back into the kitchen and grab the farfalle was too great. I practically leapt across the living room and into the kitchen, grabbed the pasta box, and made my way stealthily back to the toilet. I quickly cleaned up the remnants of the last farfalle explosion from the floor, carelessly sweeping some stubborn pieces under the rug. I lined up another dozen pieces of pasta along the toilet rim and gently positioned the seat on top. The trap was set. I threw the farfalle box into our closet. The only time my fiancé ever uses our bathroom is in the morning or before bed. I had hours of waiting, again trying not to fuck this up and prank myself for the second time. It's around midnight at this point and finally, a solid six hours later, it's time for bed. I am giddy. I wait. I hear what sounds like God himself stepping on a porcelain toilet and surprise yelp from our bathroom. I remain silent. Oh, you fucker. I'm crying. I can't breathe. Something about having pranked myself and knowing the absolute panic she had just felt sent me into a fit. At some point, I regained just enough composure to relay my endeavors in their entirety. She is impressed and also thinks I'm an idiot. Still wants to marry me, though. My husband cannot accept I don't like mustard. Things came to a head yesterday. 
We've been married for two years, dating five. We are both 34, I'm a woman, he's a man, if it matters. I'm not a picky eater. In fact, I'm quite adventurous and every time I've traveled, I've always made it a point to try dishes with unusual slash uncommon ingredients to say I've tried them. There are very few foods I won't eat. One of them is mustard, the condiment. I don't like it. I just don't. The taste is very strong and overpowering and it's an unpleasant taste. I've tried yellow, stone ground, honey, artisan, brown, spicy, you name it. I've tried them all and I just don't like them. My husband for some reason never understood this. He loves mustard, especially honey mustard. He puts it on all his sandwiches, dips his fries in it. And every time he tries to force me to try it, he'll insist I'll like it this time. I'm a grown ass woman. I know what I don't like and I don't like mustard. So I'll say no and it'll devolve into a mini argument where he'll call me picky. Well, last night we were on the road home from a weekend trip we took together and he stopped at a gas station to get us a quick bite. He got a hot dog slathered in mustard. I got one but decided to keep it plain. I don't really love hot dogs to begin with, but I will eat them. While we waited in line, he asked what I got on mine. I told him nothing. He actually got furious and grabbed it from me. He marched over to the condiment station and began putting mustard on my hot dog, telling me to grow up and stop being picky. I just walked out and sat in the car. I didn't even want the damn hot dog anymore. My appetite was gone. He came back and began screaming at me for embarrassing him even further. The word divorce was said for the first time ever. I secretly recorded his screaming because I was genuinely afraid I would die. He was driving erratically, swerving, and speeding. I'm in a hotel tonight. He ignored me all day at work, and then the calls started around when he realized I wasn't coming home. Nonstop voicemails and texts. He sent me a screenshot of a Google search from local divorce lawyers. I haven't eaten all day, and I've just been sobbing in this damn hotel room. I don't want to get divorced, and I wish I just ate the fucking mustard. Someone, anyone, please give me an explanation. Am I in danger? Why would he react this way to a preference of mine? I'm completely broken right now.